Hi everybody, Professor Tomney here, back with another Chem Complete video, and in today's lecture, we are going to take a dive into stereochemistry, and more specifically, I want to talk about the concept of chirality and what it is for a molecule to be chiral in the context of organic chemistry and organic compounds. So that is all coming up on the channel right now. Hi everybody, welcome, and let's go ahead and get started. But before we do, I want to throw out one quick reminder to head on over to chemcomplete.com for any of the free resources you might be able to take advantage of. And we also have guides available for purchase there for only a couple bucks that really helps support the channel. I also just wanted to mention that I will be having a full online organic chemistry course coming out this fall. So stay tuned for that, and you'll be able to sign up for that and have me as your direct teacher. I'll be holding office hours it will be exceptional. So let's take a look at and discuss the concept of stereochemistry, which we are then going to bleed into chirality. So stereochemistry is the way that molecules are going to be arranged in three-dimensional space. So basically, how is the molecule oriented? What groups or functional groups are in the front of the molecule, in the back of the molecule, relative to the positioning of one another and how I'm viewing it as an onlooker? How does that particular arrangement occur, right? Um, stereochemistry becomes a very important concept as we are talking about organic chemistry and then as we move into other branches such as medicinal chemistry where specific stereoisomers can have different binding or interactions with specific enzymes or other sites in the body when we are looking at organic compounds. Okay, so stereochemistry is the way that molecules are arranged and oriented in three-dimensional space. Now one of the examples that students know very well uh, usually by, uh, I would say, the first couple weeks, maybe a month or two into their course, is the concept of cis versus trans. So you can hear this even outside of the organic chemistry world when you talk about something like nutrition and you talk about trans fats, okay? But when you've got a molecule that has a double bond, you can have these two larger groups on the same side of the molecule, and that is referred to as a cis isomer, and then you can also have the same groups on opposite sides of the molecule, and this would be referred to as the trans isomer. Now the trans is considered a more stable isomer because of steric constraints. So we keep these larger groups further away from one another, and trans is usually going to be the formation that is preferred or most accepted by organic molecules. Now, that's an example of stereochemistry, but that is not an example of chirality. So chirality is kind of a subset example within the stereochemistry realm. So what is chirality? Chirality is when a molecule can be split or looked at in terms of its mirror image, and they are non-superimposable on one another. So an example that I always like to give students, and this is very common, you can see it in textbooks, and in fact the word chiral derives from the word hand or handedness in Greek. But if you take a look at it, you put your hand up, and then you imagine there's a mirror. Well, the mirror would show exactly what your other hand shows. So if they were facing these mirror images, if I were to take them and try to superimpose them, which means drag them on top of one another, you would see that the fingers and the thumbs do not align with each other. So the mirror images cannot be superimposed or basically lay right on top of one another and make a perfect drag and drop setting. And so that is what makes a molecule chiral. A molecule will be chiral when its mirror image is non-superimposable, meaning I can't drag it over top and get the same compound back, okay? And hands are an excellent example of that. So in organic chemistry, the largest cause of chirality within molecules is going to be the presence of a carbon that is bonded to four different groups, okay? So if you think about the carbon in its regular tetrahedral state, when it has nothing but, it has nothing but sigma bonds, you're going to end up with four different groups, one, two, and then it's important we start showing these or thinking about these kind of three-dimensionally. So we can say three here, right, and then a fourth group. Now sometimes these groups might be the same, right? So in a molecule, for instance, like CH3, 
three Cl, three of the four groups are the same. They're hydrogens. So maybe one, two, and three are hydrogens and four is a chlorine. That would not be chiral because the carbon needs to be bonded to four different groups. If three of them are hydrogens, then that would mean that this compound would not be considered chiral. Okay. So um, keep in mind that because we're talking about four different groups, if you ever have carbons involved in pi bonds, we are generally, at, this, at least at this stage in organic chemistry, we are not going to consider talking about chirality. There is a concept called prochirality that you can get into in relation to uh, trigonal planar type of states or intermediates. But generally speaking, when you're in an introduction to organic chemistry course, you're going to be sticking with these four different tetrahedral type of groups. And all four of them need to be different. So in other words, whatever one is, the atom of one, can, oops, I'm writing hydrogen there. Whatever one is cannot equal two, which cannot equal three, which cannot equal four. They all have to have their own unique identity. And if any of the two groups equal one another, then it would become what we call achiral. So achiral simply means something that is not chiral. Okay, so here's a good way to test yourself. What you can do is when you do this, you want to check each atom one by one. So go to the carbon that you think is a chiral center, and then you go out and you look at each individual atom. If there's two atoms that are similar, or they are the same atom, then go one atom further. Go to the next atom and see what that one is. And keep going around until you do one of two things. You either find a differentiating point, meaning they are two separate groups, or you get to a terminal area or you come to a same uh, a similar spot if it's a cyclic system and you say okay at this point these converge on the same area or they are identical on each terminus and therefore this would be a chiral because they're going to be the same two groups okay so again the key here is to look for four unique or four different groups on any carbon that you would consider chiral so i have four different examples here and with these examples, some of them are cyclic line bond skeletal structures. And if you don't know how to read those, I, I would hope you would by the point you're doing stereochemistry. But if not, I have a video on my channel about how to read and look at skeletal structures. Okay, and then over here, I've got some drawn out simpler compounds involving a couple carbons and other atoms. So what I want you to do, pause the video and try to assess these four compounds. When you assess them, I want you to determine are any of the carbons that we find in these compounds chiral? Do you see any chirality anywhere among these four different compounds? So give the video a pause, try it out, and then when you're ready, unpause it and I will walk through it. Okay, so hopefully everybody had a chance to try this out. If you take a look at the first molecule, this is going to be the easiest one to tackle because we've only got one carbon present. So it's the only one we need to assess. If we take a look at this, it should be quite evident that I've got two similar groups. I've got hydrogen and hydrogen, and then I've got a chlorine and a chlorine. So because I don't have four unique groups on this carbon, this would not be considered a chiral center. So I would mark that off. This compound would be classified as a chiral. Okay. For the next one, I've got two different carbons, but one of the two carbons is involved in a pi bond with the oxygen. And as we stated before, if you're dealing with the pi bonds, then we're not going to be assessing it for chirality. So that leaves this carbon on the left over here. So let's take a look at what we've got. It's bonded to a hydrogen. It's bonded to a carbon. It's bonded to a chlorine. And it's bonded to an oxygen. So those are four different elements. And that means there must be four unique bonding types that are occurring right here. And because of that, this carbon would get the check mark for chirality. We would identify that as a chiral center, and this would be a chiral compound. Now, coming over here, this one can be a little bit tricky if you're not used to chirality and how to assess these. So we've got this carbon up here. All the other carbons would have two hydrogens. They would be CH2s based on the skeletal structure. So that means every other carbon here is out as far as chirality is concerned. But this one at the top might be of interest. So what we do is we look and we say, okay, well, this is attached to a hydrogen. It's attached to a nitrogen, but then it's attached to a carbon, right? A CH2 group and then another carbon, which is a CH2 group. So those two right there 
do not differentiate from one another, but I can continue and I should continue until they either converge to the same spot or I find a difference and I can rank it as chiral. So I go down a CH2 again and a CH2 again. So again, a plane of symmetry is starting to show up here and then they converge on the same spot. So because of this, there is a plane of symmetry within this molecule and therefore this molecule would be a chiral because this carbon is not unique in having four different groups that are spread out here. These CH2 groups are basically the fractionated parts of the ring coming on the left and the right are identical to one another. And so this would not get the mark of chirality as we're assessing this compound. Then we move over here to the right. This one on the right, you have to look at it carefully and think about it. So what I do have here is I have a carboxylic acid and behind here or implied I should say there's also a hydrogen at this point and down here the same thing is true I have a hydrogen with this CH3 here so are these chiral well let's start with this one right here I've got a carbon I've got a hydrogen I've got a carbon and I've got a carbon so with the carbons I'm gonna have to see if they differentiate from one another so these two are CH2s this one is a C with a double bond O. So this one right here is different compared to these two. So we can say that the hydrogen and the C double bond O for the carboxylic acid group are different. The CH2 here and the CH2 here are the same. So I continue CH2 and now I get to a CH that has a CH3. So this is not a CH2. This group is different from this group right here. And therefore I would mark this as being chiral. Okay, let's hold on a second. I just want to remove that circle because we're going to assess that one down there. So this would be a chiral point, that carbon right there. Now coming down here, we have to follow the same premise. This carbon has a methyl group. It's got a hydrogen group and then it's got a CH2 and a CH2. Well, a CH3 is different than a CH2. So the methyl is good to go as far as being unique and so is the hydrogen. So then I go CH2, CH2. CH2, CH, and then a carboxylic acid group. So this group is different than this group, and therefore I would give a chiral marking to that carbon. So this would have a total of two chiral centers, one up by that carbon that contains the carboxylic acid functional group, and the other one that contains the methyl group. Okay, so that covers an introduction to chirality and identifying chiral centers and what it means for something to be chiral in organic chemistry. So I hope that you found the video useful. You can drop a like. That always helps to promote the content. Staying subscribed is one of the best forms of support and will keep you up to date throughout all of your studies. And again, chemcomplete.com, you can go over there and check out everything that we have to offer. So thank you so much for spending time learning with me today, and I will see everybody in the next video.